This video is for teachers who are looking for an overview of day one of unit two in the Passport to Social Studies curriculum. This is the first day of the unit that takes students through the antebellum period to the American Civil War. And it is fitting that this first lesson provides the students with a preview of not only the content they are going to study, but also introduce them to some of the skills that they are going to hone throughout and eventually incorporate into their culminating assessment. The focus question for this lesson is, was the Civil War inevitable? And the lesson objective is for students to use causal classifications and defining factors to discuss the causes of the Civil War. The first activity in the introduction is for students to read the definitions of the classifications of causes and provide an example of each that they know of, either from their life experience or from prior knowledge. Being able to differentiate between triggers, short-term causes, and long-term causes can be considered one of the cornerstones of this unit and one they will have multiple opportunities to practice and improve their skills on. For students who I anticipate having difficulty doing this, I would have a topical, culturally relevant event that I am certain the students are aware of, and I would present that as an option to them, then have them work on determining the triggers and the long and short-term causes. An example could be a major protest or civil rights movement or a significant foreign policy event. It could even be something less academic, like about why a local professional sports team finished with yet another losing season. The point is that regardless of the situation you provide them with, they are able to look critically at the circumstances leading up to it and be able to differentiate between these three classifications. Part two of the introduction is a reading of Alphonse the Camel, where the students will practice identifying those three causal categories in this fictional text by annotating using this color scheme. Like I just mentioned, since this skill is going to be leveraged so much throughout this unit, I would take time to conduct a brief check for understanding before moving on. Addressing any misconceptions at this point will ensure students have a solid background before applying this skill to actual social studies texts. Depending on the needs and strengths of your students, along with the unique dynamics of your class and scheduling, you could do this in a variety of ways. One example is you can pair up the students and have them compare their annotated texts and discuss the similarities and differences that exist between them. Another option, and this is the one that I do with my own students when they complete this activity, is to contrast theirs with a fully annotated model that I had made ahead of time, and then complete a reflection prompt that says something like, um, after contrasting mine to the model, the teacher should know blank about my work or about my progress. Usually I have them do this in a, like a Zoom chat, but ensure that they send it to me privately. I find this method to be relatively quick and effective at giving me a pulse on the class's understanding before moving forward, and it already gives me an indication of which students might need extra support. Also, I am an advocate for students taking some meta, doing some metacognitive self-assessment as we practice new skills. After addressing anything that stemmed from that CFU, it is time for the students to apply this practice to an actual social studies text titled From New Nation to Civil War by Dr. Uhuru Williams. Like it mentions in the guide for instruction, guidance for instruction slide that immediately preceded this one, you should ask what caused the Civil War as you introduce this text to the students. In a lot of ways, this text is ideal for the students to start this new unit with. Not only will it provide them with a preview of the multiple causes of the Civil War on a national scale, but Dr. Williams also supplements this by interweaving interesting local significant anecdotes pertaining to New York that are likely to grasp the student's attention and interest. The student should uh, annotate using the same scheme as the, uh, as the practice model with Alphonse the Camel. From there, the students will reread the text and this time they will identify evidence of these social studies elements, economic, social, political, and cultural. However, like it says here, before doing this, they should work with a group or with a partner to discuss the definition for each. Now, if you want to give them a little more guidance or structure in this discussion, you might consider providing them with a task to complete or a specific prompt to discuss or reach consensus over. One option would be to tell each group that before moving forward, they need to agree on one icon, graphic, or image that they, that they all believe best represents each one of these terms. Depending on, the outline, um, depending on the online platform you are using, if you are using one, you could direct them to create one collaboratively, or they can use a search engine to find a pre-existing one. Whatever you decide, 
finding a way to focus their discussion and apply their knowledge may increase their understanding of these terms, sharpening their perceptions as they do this second read. When annotating a text for these social studies elements, which usually we just abbreviate E, S, P, and C, and when I do this with my own classes, one way that I check for understanding is by selecting one of the lines from the text that may be considered as falling into more than one of these distinct categories and anonymously polling the students who labeled this as political or who labeled it as economic or social or political or, or whatever the case may be. If possible, I would then make the results of this poll public to the class. Then I would call on students to defend their selections and I would facilitate the discussion that inevitably ensues. Doing so will not only provide me insight into their rationale and thought process, but also provide the students with the benefit of hearing their peers discuss some of the nuances of the text and these social studies factors. For example, in this text, I would highlight this line for the poll. During the colonial period, Northern merchants generated great wealth from the slave trade, and I would then poll the students as to whether they thought this was economic or social. Also, by narrowing it down to these two, Students who may have selected other options or maybe didn't select this, this line at all are now steered towards considering it differently. The next phase of their independent work is for students to construct a paragraph in response to this prompt. What were the significant causes of the Civil War? I would stress to the students the importance of the word significant in this question. However, before we do this, have your students look at this modified version of the language of, caus of causation and consequence tool and explain to them that these are words and phrases divided into their respective categories that are commonly used by historians to discuss causation. As it says here, students should look at their options and select at least two from each category that they would want to incorporate into their own writing. This is a useful technique that I find even with my more advanced writers because it challenges them to incorporate words into their writing that they may have seldom, if ever, have used, such as latent, or multi-causal or underlying. And it's even good for my more developing writer, my, my more developing writers, because they get the benefit from the support of seeing much more accessible words in the bank, such as after and causes and led to. If this is a historical writing scaffold you are considering using again in another lesson, it is also easy to add or replace new words and phrases that not only reflect the new content, but also support vocabulary growth. This lesson culminates with the students considering everything, namely their analysis of the trigger, short-term, and long-term causes of the Civil War, and the identification of the cultural, social, political, and economic factors that were at play to make and defend a claim in response to this prompt. And when introducing this to my class, I would emphasize that this is a subjective claim that they will need to make and defend. I find that framing it like that in a personal way tends to get students to produce more thoughtful and well-developed work. Time permitting, you might consider finding ways for students to share and react to the claims made by their peers. Having the students post and then comment on sites such as Padlet or using internal activities in an online platform such as the discussion board on Nearpod or sharing everyone's responses on Pear Deck are other options. If a verbal share out is more appropriate, you can start with a dichotomous yes or no poll just as an icebreaker, then facilitate a discussion where students can share and respond to each other.